can start messing around with some other things too. Uh, let's say that I want this guy uh, to be glass. Maybe I want this to be some kind of uh, transparent glass. Uh, currently, there is no material assigned to this guy, so he's just gray. He doesn't have any materials assigned to him. Uh, if you can't see this up here, just roll your uh, mouse wheel up and down so you can see this. If you can't see the thing that says new, we'll just make a new material for it. Does anybody know what colored glass is? Okay, that's not really colored, so then it doesn't matter, right? We won't need to assign a color. Unless it's colored glass, of course. But we'll just say it's uh, regular old run of the mill, I can see through it glass. Uh, it does have a specular intensity, very high, uh, and it is very smooth. So there we go, I've got a really tight specular shine on this specular highlight. And the only other stuff that we need to worry about here with materials are these fancy settings here, transparency uh, or mirror or reflectivity, actually calculating reflections on the surfaces. So if I click down here, I do want to make this transparent. Uh, I'm going to use ray trace, which is the fancier version. And I'm going to set the alpha. Uh, if you're familiar with even Photoshop, you know what alpha is. That's basically the transparency. Uh, I'm going to choose maybe like 0.1 so we can kind of see it a little bit. Uh, but most of the uh, surface is going to be see through. It's not going to do anything with you for it. But. And I'm also going to put mirror on a little bit. So I can check this box down here. Uh, I can turn up the reflectivity amount. That's really all I have to do. You can see that if I go up here, this looks a whole lot different in my preview now. Uh, and you can even do crazier things uh, if you want to, like changing uh, index of refraction and all kinds of other fancy things. That's just, uh, basically how, how much light bends as it goes through it. Right now it's on one to one. Uh, regular glass I think is 1.2. Uh, to 1.4. So you see that if I turn that up, the light actually starts to get bent as it goes through here, so it distorts things. So, so it's like like my glasses here, or magnifying glasses, stuff like that. It will actually uh, do a, a physical calculation of how light bends. So I'm going to do a uh, truncated retina here. <laughs> Software, 
And uh, that's how they develop uh, the new features, is they actually get a group of 10 guys together and they make a movie, and they have programmers right there. Hey guys, uh, we need this feature, so let's go make it. So uh, I can encourage you, check this stuff out. Um, I'm gonna put this on my website, which is ironfuzz.com, for you to download this stuff, or you can take it off my end drive. Linda? Hey, Nick, just out of curiosity, what's the uh, acceptance in, your, in the industry for using Blender versus like Max or Maya? A, a lot of things have been changing uh, in the last probably five years. Uh, a lot of people, because of lack of Mac support, haven't really, Studio Max probably 10 years ago was industry standard for any kind of low level stuff, television, uh, gaming industries, a lot of, you know, things like that. High dollar stuff always went with Maya. Everything is owned by Autodesk now. Maya, uh, 3D Studio, XSI, all those competitors are owned by the same company now. And there hasn't been a lot of change uh, in that a lot of people, last last two years in the CG survey, uh, 3D Studio has kind of been at the bottom for support out of about 12 pieces of software. Uh, so a lot of places, uh, and that the company with not having uh, Mac support, 3D Studio doesn't work on that. Uh, and a lot of places, it depends what kind of industry you're talking about too, uh, a lot of video companies and stuff like that, they're going to send them 4D and, and other kind of you know, rising people that have Mac support and things like that. Because, I mean, a copy of Maya that will run on everything is like 6500 bucks per seat. So students have this, is it still, is it going to help her or does it doesn't matter if they still move through? If I'm an employer, I'm going to be looking at talent, not necessarily software. Uh, and I, I don't teach software specifically. That's why I let my students use whatever they want. Uh, I, I don't want to bring out my soapbox on this particular topic, but I'm, I'm big on teaching principles and not software. Because if you go to the industry, you may be using whatever you want. Uh, the techniques that you've seen here will work in any piece of software. It's just what button do I hit in the new piece of software. So any experience that you're going to get, you know, if somebody came to me and said, well, you know, uh, I see you guys have a position open for a Maya model or an animator, but I only use 3D Studio Max. Oh, well, I'm not going to look at it and say, well, your work's really good, but, you know, you're going to have a one-week learning curve, so you need to hit the street. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. If the guy's talented, he's talented. You know, you can't, you can't really train talent. And, you know, it comes through experience and just general know-how and, and uh, you know, just being good at it in general, you know. So, I guess, is that a good enough answer for you? Yeah, I just wondered if you know, how I mean, I used it professionally because it worked on Mac, Linux, and uh, we didn't have any really issues uh, no, outside of normal software issues, of course. I mean, uh, so if students want to use Blender instead of 3D Max, they already do. I, I let them use whatever they want. Because access is a big issue uh, for me, because there's no student licenses available. $400 one for the old package. You get uh, 3ds Max 2009, I think, for 400 bucks. It comes with Maya. There's no student version of 3ds Max. Yeah, they discontinued that last year. It was 30 day trial, I'd say. So that's the other reason why I'm using the option. 3ds 3D as far as I'm concerned. Any other questions? Comments? Want to know about the mysteries of the universe? Sure. I think it's, it's, that's a very good question. The same in my office. That's what I know that one. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out. Sorry we, we missed the one last bit at the end, the texture stuff, but hopefully that'll give you a really good start. It is, like I said, much like asking your mechanic how a car works and asking to explain it. 15 minutes or so. There's a lot of parts that work together. So uh, thank you for coming out and supporting and have a very good day. <laughs>